Okay, hello. Um, I wanted to make another video on the progress of Classy UI. Um, sorry about the uh, quality of this video. Uh, we're selling our apartment and like all my equipment is down in the basement. Um, but yeah, no matter. Um, uh, what I wanted to talk about uh, is how would you use Classy UI to like build a library? Uh, because Classy UI can be consumed directly but it can also be like a, um, the foundation of a library. So uh, these are some pending uh, documentation updates. So um, there are different ways you can approach Class UI as a library. You could just create a configuration file uh, where you override all the variables, basically just changing the design system. Maybe you also expose some custom classes or whatever. So basically, uh, the consumers of the library would uh, consume class UI as normal, but they would actually uh, require a configuration file from your library. And they won't necessarily have to require the configuration itself. You could expose like a function uh, that uh, allows the, the consumer to pass in some options, and then you can do different things based on that. Uh, what you could also do is uh, create a library that exposes a set of compositions. So for example, uh, you don't want to take any opinions about frameworks. So you just expose a bunch of uh, composed things like buttons and avatars and whatnot. Um, but then you could also be opinionated about the framework. So you could create like a, a React uh, component frame, uh, library uh, using class UI and then uh, then it's consumed uh, by someone who, who uses React. Now the cool thing is that um, since they're use since you're using Classy UI, it will automatically uh, um, optimize the application consuming the library. So if you're just consuming parts of the um, parts of the library, you will also only produce styles as part of the library, which is kind of cool. Um, yes. Um, another thing is that um, for that to work, like um, optimizing the, the application consuming the library, the library has to be uh, consumed uh, by the application workflow. So it's kind of like part of the application. It's part of the bubble uh, translation step. Um, so what I did here, I created like a demo thing a demo library and what's really cool about this demo library is that it actually exposes components for react view and angular um, but it's based on uh, a core concept of composed uh, composed class names um, so what i thought uh, with we can do is that i can just show you the code for that um, so here i'm actually running three different um, storybooks Maybe I can show you here first. So here we have a storybook. I think this is the HTML one. Then we have uh, React and then we have you. Like they look exactly the same and they, sh they should. And here we can see I'm running the three processes. So I just decided to use storybook because it's a really nice development flow for uh, components and you can um, like document and everything. So uh, if we take a look at the file structure here, you see I have a, uh, a folder called compositions. And this is where I have like just a base uh, compositions. And I'm defining them as uh, functions here because I want to be able to toggle a disabled state on these buttons. And then inside uh, HTML, I have a storybook HTML thing going. Uh, where you can see I'm I'm writing out the, like the stories of of these, and I'm just using these base uh, uh, functions like composition functions directly. But then I'm in React mode. I have implemented a primary button which I expose, um, and it looks like this. Uh, oh, it should also use disabled here. Uh, oh, disabled, it's disabled. Um, so I have a component and I have a story for this. But as you can see, we're still importing the same primary button from the compositions. So I'm like reusing that thing. And then we have view 
I have a primary button here. It works the same way. Um, and yeah, no biggie. Uh, the kind of cool thing though, is that when I work uh, with this, I'm now able to go in, I can go to my composition and I can say like blue and blue. And when I save this, you see that all the different versions uh, update. <laughs> I had to refresh that one. Uh, but you see them um, update. And what's really powerful about this is uh, if you've ever uh, looked into how Auth0 uh, does design systems or uh, GitHub, for example, like they are huge companies and they don't only have like a React, uh, they don't only have React apps, they might have like a view app and just some static apps. And, and the point is like you want to expose a consistent set of uh, a consistent design to all of these different um, applications. Um, and this is like a really good way to do that because you have these uh, uh, class names as like the base of everything. And then you can create components uh, to like power it up uh, for the applications using those frameworks. Another thing that's really powerful about this is that um, in the class UI config, you can actually um, expose different variations of the design system, which means that you can go to uh, idea. I come is not Emma. Sorry about that. It was my daughter <laughs> who wanted more candy. Um, anyways, um, if you have seen the presentation from GitHub on how they have like a, a brand, but they implement their design in different ways. So for example, the uh, GitHub blog uh, uses like the same foundation of the design, but it's more spacious than the GitHub app itself. So the point is that you do not only have the ability to have like core compositions, expose them as components in, for different frameworks. You can even expose different designs, uh, variations of the design system as configurations. So you could imagine that you, you're in a big company and you and you need like a spacious uh, variation of the design system. So you load that as the configuration of that app. And then you just start importing the components in whatever framework you're using to build that app, uh, which is really, really cool. Like this is not for most people, but I just wanted to like show the like the, the biggest version of, of what it, this can do. Um, yes. So that's that. Um, and then it's, let's see, a demo test. Yeah, so this is like a, a tiny app consuming, like it's, it just has that button. Um, yes. So basically what I've done here, I'm using React. So I'm uh, importing the primary button from the React version. No biggie here, like it just works. And then I can say it's disabled and then it's disabled. Yeah, no biggie. Um, but how do, uh, I mentioned that you have to make the library part of the transpilation step of the app itself. So how does that work? So, uh, currently I've only tested this with Webpack, um, and the, the requirement, I can show it here in the Webpack config. So the requirement for this to work is basically this line. Um, you have to, um, include the library as a transpilation step. Like by default, all build tools ignores node modules. And that's a rant in itself. Um, but uh, uh, but the point is that you have to override that. So in this case, we are ignoring node modules except the classy UI demo library. So this is something you will have to document on, on your library. Um, and yeah, uh, but that, that's basically it. Now it's part of the, the transpilation of the application itself and it's able to, it actually runs the plugin on the library, um, on whatever you import from the library and everything becomes part of your um, project. Cool. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited about this, uh, especially like the, the 
broadness this can result in. You don't have to have like a specific reactor, specific this or specific that. We might see uh, if uh, someone with the time and energy to, to build like a really good UI library, they could actually um, expose view angular and um, view angular react and like uh, base class names if you wanted to create a static site from the same library which i uh, and everything's linked to these base uh, class name compositions which i think is is super super awesome okay cool uh, i have a couple of other things i want to talk about before the release um but i'll save that for another video i wanted to just show this first and um I will let you know when uh, this stuff is like official, but I want to play around a bit more with it first and then um, you can have a closer look. Um, like the, um, uh, if you want to look at the classy UI uh, demo library, that's actually on GitHub already. So you can, you can check that out. Cool. Have a nice week weekend. Talk to you later.